Hello dear students a very very warm welcome to Allen Digital In today's lecture I am going to discuss an important concept related to application of derivatives which includes beta tangent and normals right tangent and normals sometimes we deal with some special cases that I am pretty focused on in this particular lecture okay let's see what these special cases are you know the basic things about tangent and normals that sir like if you give any type of curve over any point if i'm writing dy by dx that just represents the slope of the tangent on that particular point right that we already know so some special cases are there and let's see what these cases are tangent and normal in some special cases okay if the tangent at p meeting the curve y is equals to fx again at q now you must be wondering sir what is this situation the particular tangent again meeting at q so you can see that particular diagram we have a curve like this and at this point this tangent like at this point you can see the tangent and that particular tangent is again meeting the curve over another point beta i can define the point first like first point i am taking to be as x1 comma y1 and the other point i am taking to be as x2 comma y2 now what concept we would use concept is simple like first of all you can see sir i will find the slope of this line using the concept of d by by dx over which point over sir p which is x1 comma y1 this is the slope of the tangent using beta dy by dx and that same slope has to be equals to using the formula y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 concept of straight lines if you remember because line is same whether you are writing slope by dy by dx or you are writing slope by y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 beta both things are same actually right so this concept you can use and one more thing you can observe over here that this particular point na beta q is also lying on the curve so if i had to make one more equation na i can satisfy this particular point on your curve and there is one more equation ready for you right why i am focusing on that because in the next class you will see this point is not lying on the curve first of all see this case this particular concept we are going to use and let us see a question based on that particular concept because clarity is more when we are solving a question okay let's see tangent at p on the curve meets the curve again at q find the coordinates of q this time they are asking you to actually find the coordinates of q and curve is very familiar now uh, i can show you that particular uh, process using graph also graphically you can see beta like y equals to x cube we all know how to plot y equals to x cube and let us say point you are taking to be as beta 2 comma 8 over so here somewhere here you can say there is 2 comma 8 sitting okay and that tangent is again intersecting the graph if your graph is fair you can see your answer would for sure be in third quadrant right you can cross check your answer okay if your graph is fair okay let's see how we can proceed in this manner beta let us say one point is given and the other point i am assuming to be h comma h cube why because this point is lying on the curve y equals to x cube i have the liberty i can take the point like this okay yes so first of all sir what i will do na i will find dy by dx which is nothing sir but 3x square and in on which point i i am finding i am finding sir at point p 2 comma 8 so i can see my dy by dx or in other words sir i can write slope of tangent comes out to be 12 Again, I can write the same slope of tangent using which formula? Y two minus y one upon x two minus x one. So you can see this is the slope using dy by dx. Same slope you can write beta y two, which is x cube, h cube minus eight upon beta h minus two. If you can see that, right? Okay. Now we we just want to solve for h, and the point of intersection would be ready for us. Okay. Let's see. You can write this particular as twelve is equals to H minus two into using the formula of a cube minus b cube. I am just factorizing. So h square and then plus of two h and then plus of four divided by h minus two, where h minus two got cancelled. And there is a very simple equation sitting for you, like h square plus two h. And if I transfer twelve over there, it becomes minus eight beta. It's easily factorizable. You can write this equation as h minus two into 
h plus 4 is equals to 0. From here, two values like 1 is h equals to 2 and the second one is beta h equals to minus 4. See, after calculations, your first point is the same that is already given in the question. The moment you put h as 2, the y coordinate comes out to be 8. So, from here beta the point is 2 comma 8. Obviously, it has to be the same point. One of the point has to be the same. Right? Okay. The next point that they are asking, you can see if h is minus 4 beta, then here actually I am writing q. So, I will write q because here I have written q now. So, I am writing the coordinates of q as 4 comma minus of 64 and if you again I told you if your diagram is fair this point which for sure lie in third quadrant that you can see over here right. So that is the approach you can apply and you can solve your question and you can match your answer also minus 4 comma 64 okay. Let us see the other case in the other case what is happening beta if from an external point now the point is external the point is not lying on the curve you can see the situation we have a point q x2 comma y2 and from that point i am drawing a tangent whose like at point beta p x1 comma y1 it is tangent to that particular curve now you can see your point is not lying on the curve point is now i uh, now i can't take the liberty to satisfy this point over the curve right beta but yeah concept is same again sir you can find dy by dx at this point x1 comma y1 which represents the slope of this tangent and you can equate it with the formula of another formula of slope which is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 concept is same but the case is different so beta read the question very carefully okay moving on Question based on that the number of tangents drawn to the curve x y is equals to 4 from the point 0 comma 1. We need to find the number of tangents you can draw, draw from 0 comma 1 to the curve beta x y is equals to 4. Let us see first of all we are familiar with this curve rectangular hyperbola it is x y is equals to 4 and somewhere over here your point 0 comma 1 is there and from here now you might be getting the feeling now sir one tangent I can draw like this and like this like here also like here also right okay so control your mind distractions whatever mathematically we can prove we accept these answer okay otherwise you can draw anything it's your drawing right but mathematically it has to be true okay let's see beta actually let us say I am assuming we have a point and if I had to assume any particular point in this particular curve x y is equals to 4 I can write the point as let us say x coordinate is h beta so you can say the y coordinate would be 4 by h I think so you agree with me right h comma 4 by h now <coughs> first of all I am finding dy by dx so I am differentiating this equation which is x into dy by dx plus y is equals to 0 from here dy by dx comes out to be beta minus y by x and now I will satisfy the point P whose, co whose coordinates are h comma 4 by h which comes out to be minus 4 by h and one more h minus 4 by h square right this is the slope of the tangent using dy by dx, dx concept and again I can write the same slope using using let us say this is your straight line using which concept beta y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So, this particular slope minus 4 by h square sir has to be equal with the concept of y2 minus y1 which is 4 by h minus 1 upon h minus 0 x2 minus x1. Just solve for h let us see how many values of h I am getting 4 by h square is equals to uh, 4 minus h upon h square. Now, you must uh, like there is an instinct inside us so cancel h square but you are cancelling one of the possible roots okay so that is not the right way and even if you are cancelling then you can write the moment let us say I got I cancel this now so I will write one of the possible values of h has to be 0 right okay now you can just see this is what minus 4 is equals to 4 minus h beta if I transfer h over there so the another value of h that I am getting as 8. Now, if I am getting two points, you must be wondering, sir, answer is two. Like if you are getting two values of h, there must be two tangents possible. But beta c over here. If you are getting the value of h is 0, this is the case for asymptote. Because at this point, your y coordinate is not defined actually. Okay. 
so we never deal with these types of cases like it's not a real tangent i can say that you can see h equals to 8 is your favorable case and if you had to write a point you can write the point h comma 4 by h so at this point sir i will definitely have a real tangent and number of tangents that i can draw is actually one you can see the answer as one clearly okay okay let's see if we have one more question yes tangents are drawn from the origin to the curve y is equals to sin x prove that their point of contact lie on this curve beta locus we need to find the equation of the locus of all such tangents so let us say uh, we need to first see any particular case and then we will generalize that we are very, very familiar with this particular curve y is equals to sin x and let us say I am choosing one particular point over that at which I am drawing tangent although there would be more points for sure there will be more points and the locus that you will be getting over here is that you have to prove eventually okay. So first of all what is the slope of this line beta your dy by dx comes out to be what cos of x and let us say you can assume this point to be h comma k right over this point what will be your slope sir it would be cos of h for sure and again you can write the same slope of tangent using y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 also which eventually is you can see y2 minus y1 is beta k minus 0 upon h minus 0 so you can see from here the value of cos of h comes out to be sir k by h I will use that equation somewhere else right now see what I am doing now manipulations are there you see what is this curve y is equals to sin x is your curve and this curve is satisfied by p if you satisfy p h comma k on this curve beta what you can write k is equals to sin of h right what I am doing see now manipulations k square is equals to sin square h which further can be written as k square is equals to 1 minus cos square h. Are you, why I am doing that? Because I have the value of cos h. I can substitute this value of cos h and I will try to prove my locus. So we have beta if you substitute your k square comes out to be 1 minus k square by h square and after that you can modify it is h square k square is equals to h square minus k square and you remember like whenever we deal with the questions of locus at the final step we substitute h by x and k by y so your locus comes out to be x square y square is equals to x square minus y square i am sure you can match your answer with whatever the result that we needed to actually prove so these are some particular questions that we have discussed especially these particular two cases are very important you can find various questions in j mains or advanced beta okay using this concept please remember this concept and best of luck for your further studies